North Korea. The country's state news agency is now reporting that Jang Song Tech, he is the uncle of the leader Kim Jong Un, has been executed. Now, this is a surprise move because until recently, Jang was considered North Korea's second most powerful man. We knew that there was problems in the air, certainly. Earlier this week, images emerged of Jang, who was being led away by uniformed soldiers. That came during a party central committee meeting. He was denounced during that meeting for, and this is how it was described, betraying Kim and the Korean Revolution. For more on the story, let's go to Paula Hancox. She joins us live from Seoul. Paula, what are we to make of this? Well, Jim, I think some people will be uh, surprised that the fact uh, Chan Son Tech has actually been executed. After all, he is the uncle of uh, Kim Jong Un, but it really is a very strong message, the strongest message that this young leader could send that if you don't support him, this is what will happen. Uh, so we have uh, understood from, from state run media, KCNA, that he was executed. Uh, there was a, a special military tribunal on December the 12th. Uh, to, uh, to to find out exactly what he had done. And, and within the state uh, media article, uh, we are hearing that uh, Chan Son Tech was, in fact, trying to form a faction uh, and was uh, trying to build his own power base to threaten that of Kim Jong-un, uh, saying that uh, when Kim Jong-il, uh, the, the late leader, died, uh, this is when Chan Son Tech began what they call this greed for power. Now, of course, uh, it is a very isolated country. It's not a country you can easily uh, find information from. So we have to take state-run media at face value. This is the message uh, that Kim Jong-un wants to be uh, released. Now, of course, this was uh, just earlier this week that uh, it was confirmed Chan Son Tech had been fired from his post. Remember, we had those uh, very humiliating photos for Chan Son Tech, seeing him being uh, forcibly removed by military personnel from, uh, from a meeting. Uh, and uh, it, it really is a, a spectacular fall from grace. And many experts do agree that this is a consolidation of power and this is a very public message domestically within North Korea uh, that if you, uh, if you dare to disobey Kim Jong-un or not follow him and show complete loyalty, this is what could happen. Jim? Paula, I'm going to ask you to continue standing by there, but I want to uh, allow our viewers in Europe uh, to switch away now and uh, to uh, watch Amanpour already in progress. Paula, as we look at this, obviously a power struggle, but a swift denunciation followed even more swiftly by an execution. What does this say about the power base of the young leader, Kim Jong-un? Well, it's, uh, it's interesting. One expert I spoke to said that uh, if he was completely in power in North Korea and if he did feel that he had full authority of the country, then maybe he wouldn't need to actually do this so publicly. Uh, maybe he wouldn't have needed to, uh, to publicly humiliate his, uh, his uncle and, of course, then to, uh, to execute it. We now have learned this Friday morning. Uh, but others say that this just shows uh, that, uh, that he is determined to keep that power base and he will stop at nothing, even executing his own uncle. Uh, now, of course, uh, Chan Son Tech is, uh, or was considered, the second most powerful man in the country. Uh, he was uh, he was put into into place by by Kim Jong Il, the the late leader who uh, who trusted him implicitly. Uh, this is what's being said in this state-run media article that uh, Kim Il Sung and Kim Jong Il trusted him, uh, and he was basically put in place so that he could guide the young leader. Once uh, Kim Jong Un took over, Chan Son Tech was considered to be the power behind the throne. He was considered to be the one by some analysts as the one pulling the strings and, uh, and trying to help Kim Jong-un uh, grow into this role. And now all of a sudden you see that uh, he has been dismissed by Kim Jong-un and he has been uh, executed. Another expert I spoke to on North Korea was saying this shows uh, that Kim Jong-un is actually more brutal than his father and his, uh, his grandfather. The fact that he is willing uh, to, to carry something like this out even though he is family. Jim? I know that it's very hard to see into the affairs of North Korea, being a closed nation, perhaps the most closed nation on earth. But what does this tell us about what might happen in the future? Because there seem to be hints that there may have been others who were involved. If he's willing to do this to his uncle, uh, their fate might be sealed as well. 
Absolutely. The message could not be clearer. Uh, even though Chan Sun Tak was family, he was still executed because he did not show loyalty to Kim Jong un. This is a very clear message. And it is interesting, this message for an international audience, but it's very much a domestic issue. This is what Kim Jong un is showing the people within North Korea. This is what he is uh, telling to, to the elite and anybody else who may be considering not showing him complete and utter loyalty. It's, it's, the, the message really couldn't be clearer. Uh, we heard from, uh, from South Korean intelligence earlier this week. Uh, they believed that some of Chan Sun Tech's allies had been executed. Uh, now, of course, that wasn't confirmed from, from North Korea, but you see that his uncle is executed. You can, it lays credence to, to those reports, and you would imagine uh, that if he is willing to execute his uncle, then he would not necessarily think twice about executing those allies around him. We did hear from North Korea earlier this week, and he did say, uh, King Jong Un through state run media did say that this was not an individual effort by his uncle to, uh, to try and grasp power and to build this power base within the ruling Workers' Party. This was uh, done by a number of different people. So you can only assume uh, that the fate of those people would have been very similar to the fate of his uncle. Paula Hancocks, you say it, and rightly so, this is an entirely internal affair. But when it comes to North Korea, nothing is more important than the survival of the Kim dynasty, the regime itself. What happens now to the international agenda? Do we expect to see North Korea turning inwards, at least for the foreseeable future? It's very difficult to say. I would assume that that might happen, because if it has got to the point where he, uh, Kim Jong-un has had to execute his uncle and has had to basically air his dirty laundry in public, which is very unusual for a country like North Korea to be publicly admitting that there was this problem and, and publicly showing that, uh, that there was actually a defiance towards Kim Jong-un. This is not something we've really seen much of before, certainly not with the two previous leaders. Uh, whether or not there were these problems before, it's, it's not known, and whether they were dealt with quietly. But to actually air the dirty laundry in public like this is, is really quite unusual. So you would assume that this country, for the foreseeable future, for the short term, would look inwards and that, uh, that Kim Jong-un uh, would, uh, would have to look to, uh, to his own country and to his own power and the uh, elite and, uh, and check that there are no other um, individuals or groups that are trying to take power from him. Now, of course, I have to say once again, we don't know for sure if this is actually what happened. All we can do is, is look at state-run media and, and see the message that they are giving out. So it does have to be taken at, uh, at face value. But you could assume that they would be looking inward, certainly for the short term.